Hello, um, this is a quick run through how you can look at and approach um, first aid problems and emergencies um, with your horse um, whilst we're under these coronavirus restrictions, how you can work with your vet. So this time we're going to look at wounds and severe lameness. So we're looking at lameness um, where the horse can't really stand on the leg or is obviously lame at walk and wounds. We're not going to look at mild lamenesses seen at trot. So an example would be your horse is out in the field, um, you go to get it in and he's reluctant to move because he's very lame on one leg. Um, possible causes of these, this might be something simple like pus in the foot um, or cellulitis or lymphangitis or something a lot more serious like a fracture or a joint or tendon sheath infection. Um, it is possible to get laminitis just in one foot, but that tends to be associated with um, a wound or a problem or a fracture in the other leg where they've stood on the taken more weight on the one leg for longer. So uh, be very it's possible, but very unusual to get it just in one leg um, for no obvious other reason. So your vet is going to need to know a few more things over the phone than we may have done previously. Um, one of the key things is, is he, can he walk? Is he truly non-weight -weight bearing lame? Um, obviously, if he's truly non-weight bearing lame and he really can't put any weight on that leg, then you're not going to try and get him in from the field. Um, he can stay where he is. If he can move, do try and move them um, towards shelter or somewhere where you've got better facilities. Um, is there an area of heat or swelling on your horse's leg? Uh, it may be very large, it may be very small, so have a good feel up and down your horse's legs um, to see if you can find anything that's larger or smaller um, or hotter than the other leg. Um, it's a good idea just to practice doing this daily anyway and that will allow you to pick up any small changes much more easily and know that they're significant. Have you got any wounds? Um, these are much easier to find generally in the summer when this um, coat is much thinner um, on really heavily feathered uh, copy types. They can it can take a while to find wounds in their feathers. So have a really good look. Um, if there is a wound, is there any discharge coming from it? And what does that look like? Is it does it look like blood um, or is it clear or oily or straw coloured? Those are all important things to note. Other questions to ask yourself are what facilities do I have? Am I healthy? Um, are other people on the yard healthy? Um, has um, obviously if you or any member of your family um, has any symptoms, then you should be self isolating. And whilst you may be able to check your own horse at home whilst you're self isolating, um, your vet needs to be aware of this and you need to come up with a plan between them about how you manage to get your horse seen if necessary um, without putting any increased risk on on your vet or their colleagues or families. So it's very important that everyone is open and honest. If your horse is on a yard and there are other people on the yard that are infected then also or have clinical signs then obviously um, you have been in contact with those so you would be and your vet would be at an increased risk of visiting the yard. These are all things that you need to discuss with your vet. Um, so moving on. So if your horse can walk, um, move them, encourage them to go to a, a dry, clean area or stable, preferably somewhere flat with some water um, and lights if the lighting isn't very good outside. Have another good look at your horse's leg, looking for wounds or stones. Um, you can get really lame horses that have just got a stone um, wedged under their shoe. Normally, if you remove that stone, then um, they are much improved. If the leg's muddy, give it a good clean off with a hose um, and then make your phone call to the vet or farrier if you haven't already. Um, the same precautions, discussions need to be had with your farrier as with your vet. Um, if, there are, if you are aware of people with clinical signs or symptoms or in contact with those with them on the yard. If your horse has a really obvious wound, um, a really obvious break, um, so this may be that the horse's leg is flapping um, or they're really, really sore and they really can't walk, then obviously don't move them further. Ones to be aware of, or if they're really lame and they just have a kick over, or a wound over the forearm, um, those can be non-displaced fractures. So you just, if they're, if they're painful with a wound there, try not to move them. Um, keep a friend, uh, 
their best mate um, nearby. Um, if possible, um, take any other horses that are getting in the way away. Um, obviously, don't stand too close to anyone because of the social distancing requirements. Um, keep your horse as calm and quiet as you can. This may require you to have some, some polos in your pocket or some hay, or if that just makes them more antsy because they're looking for polos, then avoid that. You will know your horse best. Um, if you if you uh, it's probably a good idea to call your vet at this point um, and discuss with them whether you're going to require transport or whether actually your horse is going to require to be put to sleep. Um, if the light is going, then investigate torches and light so that your vet has a chance of being able to see what's going on when they get there. Um, if your horse is insured and you have mortality insurance, it may be an idea to give them a ring. Uh, localised swelling, so a localised cellulitis or um, a bit of a fat leg near a wound. Um, it's usually associated with a wound um, and it can be several hours or several days old. These can blow up quite quick in hot weather, so um, don't beat yourself up that you've um, not noticed a wound. Um, I've known them come up over a dur duration just of a couple of hours. Most of these are usually able to walk with some encouragement. They may be a bit sluggish to get going, but once they start, they're OK. If you've got a wound, keep an eye on it as you're walking them. Just keep an eye out for any discharge that's coming out of the wound. How much and what colour is always useful to know. If the wound's near a joint or from a knee or hock downwards, you're likely to need some form of consultation of your vet. Um, do give them a call and follow their advice. And these times they may feel that a uh, um, telephone uh, video call is fine or they may feel that they need to come and see your horse again. Um, there are various factors that are going to be involved in this decision making process, so be as honest and open as with your vet as you can. Um, if the wound's elsewhere, you'll probably still need to call the vet. We can prescribe uh, antibiotics and medication via video call at the moment, um, so <clears throat> it may well be that your um, vet does that. If you've got a horse with a big fat leg, Normally, these will walk with some encouragement. Um, it's the whole leg that's swollen a bit like a tree trunk. Um, encourage them to get to a stable. Um, cold hosing, exercise and some sometimes antibiotics are needed for this. Sometimes you'll get some steroids as well. Often there's small scratches in the heels um, where the infections got in, but not always. Um, again, um, discussion with your vet will decide whether or not this um, will re require a call or prescribing antibiotics via a video call. So take home messages. Obviously, if your horse is very lame, this is a welfare issue, your horse will need help. Um, call your vet to discuss specific circumstances, not just about the, the problem with the horse, but also um, risk of infection and make a plan together. So when it comes to wounds, you need to look at the whole horse, um, not just the wound. With wounds like this one here, it's really easy to just look at the wound and forget about the rest of the horse. Um, so we need to know if they're lame. Um, if they are lame, are they lame at walk? How lame are they at walk? Are they able to put their entire foot down and bear weight on it or are they only touch toe touching? Where's the wound? Is it near a joint and how deep is it? Have they lost a lot of blood? <clears throat> so have a look at your horse's gums. Just lift up the lip and press the gum. The colour should come back pretty much instantaneously and it should be a sort of salmon pink colour. Um, these are things that we would normally do when we come out, but these are things that you can do for us um, and let us know about um, and so reduce our need to come out all the time. Has he lost a lot of blood? If his gums are pale, he may have done. Other signs of that are agitation and an increased heart rate. So look at the gums and have a look round for any blood. Um, if the wound's large, bleeding heavily or full thickness, so goes all the way through the skin and is near a joint or a tendon sheath um, or synovial structure, then um, you are likely to need a visit from your vet. But again, this should be discussed with your vet. So the wound on the left, um, is a big gaping hole in a horse's side. This looks horrific, but the wound on the right, the little innocuous hole over the horse's hop joint is actually the life-threatening wound of these two. 
um, the one on the top right will require surgery to um, flush out the joint. If you've got heavy bleeding, you need to put pressure on the wound. You can use a hand, a towel or a bandage. Don't use tissues. They fall apart and get into the wound and cause more problems than they're worth. Um, so if you don't have any um, proper dressings, then a towel or a clean towel or bandage put on and then wrapped around. Most bleeding will stop if you put firm continuous pressure on it for five minutes. Five minutes is a long time. Um, so do keep it on there because if you take it off too soon, the bleeding will restart. If you've got bright red spurting or pumping blood, it's much more likely to be arterial. Um, that's going to need firm pressure on it for more like 10 minutes just because of the increased pressure in the blood vessels. If you've got muscle, like in that previous picture of the horse's side, there, there's lots of blood vessels in there, so you are going to get a decent amount of sort of oozing bleeding. This comes out more as um, a sort of trickly thing rather than um, running blood like a tap or a trickling tap or something like that. That's more of a um, oozing effect. Pressure should help stop that. So how do you do it? You apply a dressing or your clean tea towel or towel. And then if you have lots of, if you have cotton wool, use a lot of it when bandaging. You need to, because you need to put the pressure on, the cotton wool is important to stop you getting pressure points and causing any other damage underneath the bandage. So you put a layer, put a layer of cotton wool on, wrap a bandage around it um, tightly, and then if it's still bleeding, put another layer on and you keep going until you um, have stopped the bleeding. Keep the horse quiet and check the colour of the gums and the heart rate again. Um, your heart, horse's heart rate should be about 36 to 40 beats a minute. Um, it can go a bit higher than this with agitation, but it shouldn't stay high. So if your horse's heart rate is constantly it's sitting at above 55 to 60, definitely above 60, we need to know about that. Um, agitation can also be a sign of greater blood loss. So do let us know if they're also more agitated than usual. So some ballpoint um, numbers, your average thoroughbred type, not warm blood, thoroughbred type horse weighs about 500 kilos. About 10% of the body weight um, is equal to blood volume, so that's about 50 litres. And 10% of this can be lost in acutely or in one go before the horse notices physiologically, so that's five litres. So if you imagine your um, big jugs of milk. Um, a lot of milk will go a long way if you drop it in the same way that a lot of blood will that blood will spread a long way. So five litres of blood, it can make quite a big puddle on the floor. Um, we wouldn't expect to see um, signs of blood loss until about 10 litres have been lost. So that's when we start getting fairly seriously concerned. And that's when your horse's heart rate will start to go up. The gums may be paler. Um, and the horse may become, may start showing signs of agitation and distress. So if the wound's near to a joint, we need to know things like, is he lame? How lame is he? Um, is he lame at walk? Um, how lame at walk is he? Can he bear weight on that leg at all? Or is he just reluctant to put the um, heel down? What's coming out of the wound? Um, is it blood or is it sort of straw coloured oily fluid? When you rub it, if you have it on your fingers and you rub your fingers together, does it feel oily? Does it string? Does it hold between the two um, as you pull your fingers apart? Give it a clean um, with some salty water or dilute hippie scrub um, and cover with a dressing if you can. Don't use wound powder. Um, please don't give butte until you've spoken to your vet. Um, because this can mask signs of pain and we need to know how sore your horse is so that we know how serious um, any underlying structures in the involvement of any underlying structures could be. So in this wound, um, we're back to our wound over our hock, you can see some fluid running down here and it's a sort of pink tinged strawy colour. So that's um, the sort of fluid we can get if you have a joint um, involved. And this is just a close up of the fluid. So joints in horses and synovial structures, you've got your elbow, which is actually more to the side of the horse's leg than you might imagine. Um, your knee, your fetlock, you've got your coffin joint and you can also get into your coffin joint from the side. 
These blue circles are where you've got tendon sheaths, which are also important structures to try and avoid. And you've got your hock joint here. So any wounds um, that go all the way through the skin in those areas need to be taken seriously, even if they only look tiny. Nails in feet, um, another serious, uh, potentially serious problem. Um, if the nail's gone into the sole of the hoof, try not to remove it. Um, if you pull the nail out, then the hoof can um, seal up the tract behind it and it's really hard to find out where that nail's gone and how deep it's gone and what might be involved. You also can get the um, bacteria and dirt stuck in at the, dist at the far end of the wound. If you can snip the end of the nail off, do or pad round the protruding nail so that it doesn't get forced in any further um, whilst you call your vet for more advice. Um, and you need to take note of where the puncture wound is in the frog, um, is in the hoof, sorry, in the frog or the middle third of the sole. These can be quite, these can be very serious because there's a lot of important structures um, underneath those areas. So this is an example of a nail that's gone into a horse's hoof that's been x-rayed with a nail in place so we can see exactly where it's gone. You can see from this view it looks like it's gone straight into the bone and all sorts of um, possibly the coffin joint. Um, but actually when we take the side, the lateral view, the sideways view, um, it's missing all those structures. And whilst it is causing a big tract and that is going to need some cleaning, um, you haven't actually involved any of the bony structures or the synovial structures around here or here. So take home message, the size of the wound is not as important as its position. If you can stop the bleeding, do. Um, always try and stop bleeding. Clean the wound if you can. Um, and if the horse is lame at walk or the wound is full thickness near a joint, um, you are going to need some form of consultation from your vet. Um, obviously in these times call your vet to decide what sort of consultation is appropriate. Um, those sorts of wounds don't leave and see how they look in the, mo look in the morning even nowadays.